This video is technically a sequel, so if you haven't seen the first part, please consider not watching it because I'm embarrassed of it now. That's not to say I've improved since then or anything, this video will probably be just as bad. I pride myself on my inability to improve. The holidays have always been an incredible time of year for people to get together with their loved ones with cozy lighting and delicious food to be reminded of how much more progressive they are than their extended family, but the holidays this year are going to be very different, especially for people like me. Normally around this time you'd have Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, and so on, but this year there's a new holiday right in between. This year we have December 8th otherwise known as the day that my rent is due, baby. That's right, I'm a week behind on payments for this lovely little room of mine, and considering how well my Halo video performed in comparison to my other ones, I figured it would be worth it to revisit the franchise. I don't understand you guys, I gave you a penis joke video and a Fortnite video, why are you still unsatisfied? Up first we've got Halo Wars. I'm not playing this. I'm fully aware of what the title of the video says, but there's no way I'm actually playing the rest of the Halo franchise. I'm trying to graduate this month, I've got a lot on my plate. And my laptop overheats and crashes if my videos are longer than 15 minutes, so... On with the show, I guess. Halo 3 ODST is a very special game to me because of the history I have with it. I have never played this game, nor have I ever purchased this game, and yet despite these facts, I have owned a copy of this game's disc for as long as I can remember. I don't have the box for it, and I have no idea where I keep it, so like once every year it'll just appear in some random part of my room as if it's taken on sentience and is moving itself around, hoping, nay, waiting for the day that I might finally slide it into my Xbox 360 and give it a chance. My alternative theory is that I stole it from a friend in a very disorganized room, but I feel like both of these theories are equally possible. ODST is the Iron Man 2 of the Halo franchise. That might sound like an insult, but I can promise you that it is. But only a little. It's an entertaining, inoffensive entry riding on the coattails of its predecessor that eventually got overshadowed by some of the later releases in the series. The story gets away from all the grandiose, saving the universe storytelling from the original trilogy, and focuses on telling a much smaller, more human story of a team of operatives stranded in a city that is very clearly not Cairo. You'd have to be an absolute buffoon to think this was Cairo. I'm sorry I thought this was Cairo. I was excited to play as a character other than Chief for once, and the combat definitely reminds you that you are not a super soldier. You take damage significantly faster, and there's a lot of enemies who can down you in one hit. Because you play as a human, you feel more vulnerable, and the voice acting helps sell it. Just listen to how much you wheeze when you take damage, Nathan Fillion is giving this his all. Also, speaking of voice acting, like halfway through this game I realized that the brutes sound exactly like Tom Hardy's Venom and it ruined the game for me. Hop him like a bottle and drink his blood. I thought the pacing of the game was a little clunky switching back between the rookie and the events that took place hours before because you eventually realize that the sections where you play as the rookie are just pointless little hallway shooters between the actual meat of the game. That said, these were probably my favorite sections of the game simply because of how atmospheric walking around the abandoned mega city was with the almost jazz inspired soundtrack playing in the background. It feels like cheating to give this game points because it reminds me of Cowboy Bebop, but I don't really care, because I'm in charge of this. And then the game ends. If that transition felt a little jarring, that's because this game literally ends out of nowhere on an incredibly indifferent note. You have the world's slowest high speed chase, and then you defend a zoo from yet another enemy wave rush section, and then it just ends. I liked it. Halo Reach is the least worst thing to come out of the Halo franchise in the last decade that is incredibly painful to realize. What I'm trying to say is that I really enjoyed this game. Is it perfect? No. But does it have the most exciting spaceship mission in a Halo game? Also no. That award goes to the first mission in Combat Evolved, but you do get to control the spaceship, and I think that should be celebrated. Reach just feels unique from the rest of the Halo series without feeling out of place. I think part of this is because it abandons the lush, Washington-inspired landscapes in favor of a cold and craggy planet that looks weirdly familiar, I, I can't figure out why though. I thought the game did a fantastic job making the Halo universe feel more real with such small additions. 
Learning about the rebel farmers on Reach, or even seeing what an apartment complex looks like in 2552 made the world seem lively and realistic. I loved the diversity of the maps, I thought the pulsating electronic music was incredible, and I almost liked the story. Almost. In terms of plot, Halo Reach is actually just Rogue One. I'm aware that that joke is incredibly unoriginal, but I'm a video essay channel on YouTube in 2021. I don't know why you would've expected originality from me in the first place. This also means that Reach and Rogue One actually share the same shortcomings too. While I liked the premise of following a team of operatives on a suicide mission, their deaths had absolutely no impact for me because the writers forgot to flesh out these characters outside of incredibly surface level character development. Oh, he's the edgy guy, cause he's got a skull on his visor. That isn't practical, I know for a fact you can't see anything in your peripherals. You barely learn anything about these other characters during the course of the game. What are their aspirations? What are their fears? How do they get along with one another? These are the things that make characters feel real and give their deaths impact. Just because you're playing sad music doesn't mean I'm gonna feel anything. The only death that Reach does nail is yours. That's right, you. Bungie knows how you're gonna die. The building sense of dread you feel as you slowly begin to realize that you might not make it out of your final mission alive as your final objective appears at the top of the screen is so well executed, it pretty much compensates for any other shortcomings the game might have. The game definitely is not forgiving to people who don't fully understand the lore of the Spartan program and Dr. Halsey and all that, but for this moment alone, I think this game is an absolute must play. In my opinion, this represents some of the most creative and innovative moments in Halo, and I would argue that Reach is one of the franchise's definitive high points. Which means it's all downhill from here. Before we start, I just want to come out and say that I think Halo 4 is a decent game. It's not perfect, but it is a noticeable fall from grace from the original trilogy. I say this because I sometimes become overly negative, even of things that I like, so I want to start this section off by saying some nice things about Halo 4 because I am going to be very critical of this game. I love that the story chose to place its focus on the relationship between Master Chief and Cortana and took the opportunity to expand the backstory of the characters while making the plot feel much more personal and emotional. I also like the mammoth. That's everything. I'm joking, of course, but I have a lot more negative stuff to say than positive. Also, uh, this guy looks like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Halo 4 committed a cardinal sin by adding insane amounts of lore to their game. I've got a lot going up there to begin with. I don't know why 343 thought I would have any space left for whatever this game was cooking up in the lore department. I'm a big proponent of the idea that lore in video games should be optional. Skyrim is a game which I love to play, but the thing is, I don't give a shit about the history of Tamriel because it's confusing and also not real. But what's cool though is that if you aren't like me and have no self-respect, you can actually spend real life hours reading in-game books to learn more about this fictional universe. Halo 4 just assumes you care and starts cramming this stuff down your throat because don't you want to know what space humans looked like 10,000 years ago? And don't you want to know how long AI live? And don't you want to know why you're fighting friggin' Peabody from Portal? Not really! Halo 1 works because of how little lore the game gives you. The origins of the Flood and the actual Halo rings are left as a mystery, which makes you as the player create your own backstory for them. It instills you with a sense of wonder and almost Lovecraftian dread, as anything you can come up with is probably scarier than the truth. This entire universe was set up by people that look like they evolved to survive car accidents. Listen. I'm by no means an artist, alright? You guys have seen the extent of my artistic ability, but I can't help feel like the character design on this guy is really lacking. He looks like a testicle with an arachnid's mouth, I hate it. But let's be honest with ourselves. All of this other stuff is forgivable as long as these games get the combat and the story right. This is the part where I pause for comedic effect before saying that they only got one. When I say they messed up the combat, I'm referring to how the flow of combat from the first three games is removed by the fact that in order to kill the knights, you have to take out the phantom fours they can literally just spawn in, which revive them and make them live longer. You might have thought I was referring to this ongoing debate concerning the added sprint feature, so I might as well throw my two cents in on that while I'm at it. It literally doesn't matter. I am genuinely shocked that this has become this much of an issue within the community. Running didn't ruin your Halo sequel, bad writing did and bad character designs, and bad combat, and bad lore. Do I even like this game? <laughs> so
so it turns out that I do like Halo 4. I have a love-hate relationship with Halo 5, as in I really love to hate this game, it is such an easy target. This is probably going to be the shortest section of this video because I don't even feel like I need to defend my opinion here. I am in legitimate awe that actual developers and writers got together after seeing the mistakes of Halo 4 and said, alright, I know how to fix this. What if we completely negate the emotional impact of the last game by reviving Cortana but making her evil this time? And then what if we eliminate any exciting potential the new strained relationship between Chief and Cortana might have by making you play as literally anybody but Chief for 80% of the game? And then the game shipped! Just like that! I'm not even that upset about making Cortana evil, I actually really like it. I'm all for Chief and Cortana becoming like an intergalactic Naruto and Sasuke, but the execution on this was just bogus. You can't write a character-driven story like this and then not let me play as the protagonist of the story. That's like making me play as Navi in Ocarina of Time instead of Link. I'm just watching an incredibly personal story from like the least personal perspective possible. Why are you forcing me to play as Spartan Lock? They won't even let me have fun as the character. They spend half the game hyping me up for this fight with Chief and then it just cuts to a cutscene film using the motion capture from a Kinect. Also, the game doesn't even feel like a Halo game. There's this weird middle section sandwiched in between that feels like it wanted to turn Halo into Uncharted, but it just ended up feeling like you're trapped in a town in a D&D campaign that the DM never finished planning. Not everyone's gonna get that comparison, so hang in there with me. They try to develop this little town to, I don't know, expand the universe, I guess, but you literally can't do anything in here. It's just a dumb open space to walk around in. It feels hollow and unfinished, which is honestly how I would probably describe this game. I hope you guys didn't click on this video expecting it to be one of those retrospectives where they talk about how the game was just ahead of its time or misunderstood, because that's definitely not the case. This game was bad at launch and it's still bad today. Now, keep in mind, when I say this, I mean it's a bad Halo game. As a shooter, it's very competent, even despite all the visual clutter. Just so you guys don't think I'm some vitriolic basement dweller, I'm gonna use every fiber in my being to scrounge up some things that I do like about this game. Uh, Chief no longer looks like he's wearing lizard skin beneath a suit of armor made out of a waste management truck, so that's nice. And they let you fight more grunts again, which just warms my cold dead heart. They have dildos on their back instead of their cool pointed backpacks, but you can't win them all, I guess. Also, I like the home screen for this game. I think it's well composed and minimalistic. Other than that, this game is a total flub. If you've watched this far into the video, which I know you haven't, no one ever does, you might be thinking that this is a very depressing video, and you'd be right to think so, because that's how I planned this. When I originally wrote this script, I had my review of Reach placed at the end, after I talked about Halo 5, to try and lighten up the mood, but I realized that I just can't do that. I wanted to review the games in order of release date to try and emphasize how far this series has fallen. By Halo standards, the last good entry we've had to this franchise released the same year I learned Long Division, and the last great entry released the year I learned I did not understand Long Division. And I still don't. With Infinite coming out so soon, I thought it would be important to remind everyone how important this game really is. After a decade of duds, this isn't just another entry into the series. This is the game that can either restore Halo to its former glory, or cemented as yet another franchise burdened by its own legacy and unable to reinvent itself. Regardless, at the end of the day, all that really matters is that I pay my rent! Please, share this video! That must be Angela, our head of VR devices. Hey, Angela! <laughs> the holidays of- <clears throat> I'm sick. This year, there's a new holiday right in between. I don't like the way I said that. I have never played this game, nor have I ever. <laughs> nor have I ever, nor have I ever, nor have I ever, nor have I ever. Nay, waiting for the day. Why did I write nay? <laughs> like a medieval jester, why would I, why? <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sick, I just really want money. Why do I say brutes like that? Brute. <laughs> like halfway through this game, I realized the brute sounded. I said it, I say brute. Why? Uh, I'm done. Whatever. The line is fine. I wonder if you can hear <laughs> how out of breath I was. I wanted to review the games in order of release date to emphasize how far the. To emphasize. 
I would like to emphasize how weird my voice is. And then it just cuts to a cutscene filmed using the motion capture from, from, uh, can, uh, da, da. <laughs> Damn, I really fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs>